Canada. They're hoping this year, this, 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 this year, uh, earlier this year, and of course the Badgers already picked up a win today over Indiana. They're hoping for an Iowa big time upset to keep their Big Ten championship hopes alive. Is that what's touched on the Iowa side? Nope, they're going to say no touch and point Hawkeyes. So it should be now 7 4, I believe. As you look at the coaching staff for Nebraska, and John Cook got a chance to catch up with him yesterday morning. It is big thing. We are focused on winning the next point and just how we get better today. Because, of course, we pressed him on, you know, NCAA tournament around the corner. What are your thoughts? And not thinking about that just yet. No, nope, one point ahead. And what a great way to keep the Cornhuskers focused is that's all they talk about. The next point, the next opponent. Butner off target with the attack. 8-4 now, Nebraska. And serving will be Merritt Beeson, the junior transfer. Two seasons at Florida. All SEC, all region last year as well. Part of an SEC championship team last year. And has kept that role going into the Big Ten with Nebraska. Riley, back row, tip there by Murray. Good hang time by Harper Murray to get the one hand shot over the net. Well, Harper Murray playing back row, that six rotation defense, which is really impressive as a freshman to be playing all six rotations and how much trust John Cook has in Murray. Another serve here for Beeson, four time Big Ten Player of the Week this season. Coming off a seven kill, nine day performance on Friday against Michigan as that's kept up and Three ball here for the Hawkeyes. Middle tip. And that's a point for Rosa Vesti, a freshman from New Zealand for the Hawkeyes, coming off one of her better games. Tied her career high with five blocks at Minnesota on Friday. And this really just might be what Iowa needs to do. Cause some of that disruption in the middle of the court. Tipping finesse just to find a way to get a point. Butner on the serve now for the Hawkeyes. Batenhorst cross court the kill down in front of Darling. Batenhorst able to recognize that the block is taking everything away down the line and decides to go ahead and go cross just outside of Vesti for the point. Batenhorst now to the sideline. And Nebraska on the serve with a five point advantage here in set one. Never have lost to this Iowa program. The Huskers are 37 and 0. They run the slide, but they go back row instead to Beeson. The big run nicely by the Cornhuskers. Beeson also playing all the way around six rotation player. Just how many weapons Nebraska has at each location. This is Laney Choboy who is serving. John Cook saying about Choboy that she's right behind Lexi which I take to mean that when Rodriguez's career is done at Nebraska, Laney Choboy will take over the libero duties, but Choboy already plays a ton as it is as a defensive specialist. Yeah, and you look at the opponents trying to serve to the back row of Nebraska. Who do you choose? Who are you going to focus on? And a lot of times that goes to the outside hitters just because of the three. Those other two are so strong. Kaya Mateo is in as the center for Iowa as they run a 6-2. Murray into the hands of the block. Here's Mateo setting it for McSweeney, who finds the gap next to Lexi Rodriguez. And so McSweeney picks up her second termination. She's two for five. Well, transition volleyball, that's really important when you're trying to get points. And we see McSweeney splitting the block, going right to the deep corner. The serve coming short there, Rodriguez able to play it, and then on the right side, Andy Jackson. How about another big-time freshman for the Cornhuskers from Brighton, Colorado? Not only is she second in the Big Ten in hitting percentage, but she's 12th in the country. Yeah, and she's so fast on that slide, going all the way around the setter, being able to line up and quick arm. 12-7, Kennedy Orr will serve, junior from Egan, Minnesota. She has six aces against 18 service errors on the year. And that'll be a kill for Natalie Moravec, redshirt freshman from Weston, Connecticut. Started her career at BYU, but did not play for the Cougars. And of course now here with the Hawkeyes. 
Well, those first ball kills are really the great opportunities that Iowa can take advantage of. If they can get first ball kills and then work really hard in that transition, the point difference really starts to get closer. One of the things you notice with Iowa is they lead the Big Ten in team attacks per set, but they're at the bottom in hitting percentage and kills as flying in from the back row. Once again, the back row kill for Merritt Beeson, and she has her second of the afternoon to go along with a couple of digs and a block. Yeah, and to your point, Scott, that really just means execution. So the defense of Iowa is able to create all these opportunities, but can they execute at the end so that they have a better hitting percentage? Bergen Riley back to serve now for the second time through. That goes off the net. Rodriguez gets down there with the right hand to pop it up and then hit over by Murray. Down the line, Moravec coming over. McSweeney taps it back. Harper Murray down the line, and they're calling it out on that far judge. He calls out. It's so point Iowa. And look at Iowa and their offense guarding the net. McSweeney turning around, trying to block the ball, creating that disruption. Iowa Hawkeyes working hard right now. They're swept at Minnesota on Friday. They've been swept at each of their last six matches. And before that had a five set loss at home against Rutgers. As the Cornhuskers back up by five, 14 to nine here in the first set. Look at the side out percentage for each team. Nebraska is siding out right now at 77%. Iowa, 50%, which actually isn't too bad when you look at side out percentage. It's just that Nebraska is such at a high number right now. Hit over by Butner. Riley sets it Beeson into the block, popped up by McSweeney, pushed over by Butner. They go quick. And for the first time today, we call out Becca Alec, the sophomore from Lincoln, Nebraska, all Big Ten second team last year. She gets her team to 15. And the Cornhuskers a 15-9 advantage here in set one in this Big Ten volleyball matchup on a Sunday afternoon defense and controlling their side of the net. The Huskers are going to get their kills. What can they do to control their side? Rodriguez with the cover there. Back row, Harper Murray finds the open space in the back row, and Harper Murray collects her third kill. Murray, Batenhorst, and Beeson all have three for Nebraska as they're hitting 429 thus far. Iowa, four kills, but four errors. Served by Murray and goes off the back of the head of her teammate Merritt Beeson and they might be having a smile and a laugh in that huddle. Well, depending on how hard that serve was, that could be that's pretty good, painful. That's a good point, <laughs> it, you're right. Amanda Darling will serve. Redshirt junior from Oswego, Illinois. Mentioned two seasons at Niagara. 32 matches played over her two years there. And that's a finish for Allie Batenhorst, her match high fourth kill now. Batenhorst getting the kill off a of not a perfect pass by Lexi Rodriguez, but that's just how good the setter is for Nebraska and being able to adjust and get the ball to Batenhorst. Rodriguez now with the serve. Buechner will pick up the kill. First kill today for Caitlin Butner, who had seven kills against Minnesota. She reached 1,000 kills for her career back on October the 14th. Of course, played her first, uh, first four seasons at Texas State before coming to Iowa this year. You see some other transfers on this Iowa team, namely from Tulane, where Jim Barnes, of course, was the head coach uh, prior to coming to Iowa. 2016 through 2021 was the head coach at Tulane. Side out Cornhuskers, 18-11 now the score. The Cornhuskers corn really showing how focused they are in every point. Every time they've had an opportunity to side out, they really just get it done in that first ball kill. Side out percentage at 82% now for Nebraska today. Long set by Mateo and the swing by Butner. 
Well, this is good for the Hawkeyes, getting Caitlin Butner involved. She goes back to serve now, but this cross-court shot, powerful all the way out to the antenna, just a whip on the outside. Mateo, by the way, is a freshman setter from New York City for the Hawkeyes. Bailey Ortega, the starting setter. Free ball here for Iowa. Mateo will set it in the middle for Vesti. Comes back to the Iowa side. Darling, the bump set for Moravec, off target. Good example there where the Hawkeyes have multiple opportunities. Their defense kept them in, their coverage kept in. It's just a hitting error, but that is a tough task on the outside with the height of the Cornhuskers trying to block. Oftentimes forcing hitters to into hitting errors, trying to get a shot or hit high hands and it goes out. The fifth attack error for the Hawkeyes. And getting it right back on the right side attack. That's a kill for Anna Davis, redshirt junior. One of those transfers from Tulane. She played 52 matches with Tulane before joining Iowa this season. 19-13, Nebraska here in the first. Riley. And the slide and the kill down the line for Andy Jackson. Big Ten Freshman of the Week last week. She had averaged 2.13 kills, 1.13 blocks, and it's 7-14 in a pair of wins over Northwestern and Illinois. Well, we heard the arena go, woo, <laughs> with the power of that hit from Andy Jackson. Serve receive was Darling. Moravec blocked right back. Middle, McSweeney popped around by the Husker defense. Murray off the hands of the block. Mateo back set, blocked once again by the Cornhuskers. Rolled over on that shot. Riley trying to dump it on second contact, and McSweeney at 6-7 denied that. Again, getting the hands on the block. So good block touches here by the Hawkeyes. Back row attack and Buechner. So that's set up nicely by the Iowa block touches and the, the digs from the Hawkeyes. They are second in the Big Ten in digs per set. Yeah, the defense creating that opportunity for Caitlin Buechner out of the back row and just the power swinging high off the hands of the Cornhuskers. And to serve is Bailey Ortega, the senior setter from Davenport, Iowa, out of Davenport North. This is her 107th career match as a Hawkeye. She's 10th all-time in program history in assists as she reached a 2,000 mark last month as they run the slide for Becca Alec this time. And Alec with the kill. She had 700 on Friday against Michigan, 331 on the season for the sophomore. Well, slides are so hard to defend in general just because of the set and it's moving along, blockers trying to catch up, and then you add Becca Alec out there swinging away with lots of power. Off one foot, that attack from the right side. Nebraska handles it, Murray. Ortega tried to dump it on the second touch. Right side, Beeson. Close at the net, and Moravec able to tool it off the block. The Hawkeyes defense is what's keeping them in this match so far. They're creating multiple opportunities, and that's often what gets teams these momentum runs, as we see here, Moravec going off of the block. A beast. Moravec now back to serve for the Hawkeyes. Riley goes back to Murray into the block of Butner and McSweeney. Well, McSweeney standing at 6'7 herself, 6'2 with Butner, creating a little bit of a wall here on the right side. Great penetration back to Murray. Each team now has one block point in this first set as that goes long for Iowa's first service error. Nebraska has three and the only ace thus far today. Six-point advantage for John Cook's club here in this first set. Macy Bosiger has come in for the Cornhuskers. McSweeney, 
She'll pick up another, her third. McSweeney's reach when she goes to swing is something to marvel at. Just a, she does a really nice job, fast arm, and then she moves along the net really well, creating that illusion of where she's going to go. Started her career at Wake Forest, now in her second year at Iowa. Played two seasons for the Demon Deacons. They go short on the serve, leads to an overpass, and the finish for Rosa Vesti. So the Hawkeyes are hanging tough right now with the number one team of the country. The undefeated Cornhuskers at 26 and 0. We're off to their best start since they went 28 and 0 back in 2005. The hardest part in volleyball is defending the serve. As you see, Iowa really working hard to try and keep that ball alive. 23-18 now, Nebraska. Look at this highlight first. Going off high of the hands. Good effort to try and keep it alive. You know, John Cook telling us you know, there are times, this is a young team. There are no seniors for Nebraska. And at times, their age may show in some of the way that they'll play. That's going to be Point Iowa, 23-19. Like Alec was in the net for Nebraska. Yeah, you bring up a good point when talking to John Cook. He did mention that some nights we look really good and some nights we don't. And half of that is that part of being focused and the next point. Murray on the serve receive. Butner down to play it and then back row. And that's going to be ruled a tip. Touched off the attack by Moravec. And it's 23-20 here in the first set. Anytime a hitter is going against a really tall block, you look for those high hands and aim for the end of the arena. And that's how uh, Iowa is able to get the points right now, hitting those high hands. Out of system here for the Huskers. See if Iowa can take advantage. Butner and into the antenna with that. Point Nebraska, now they have set point. Nebraska's led the entire way in the first set, got off to a 3-0 advantage. Led by as many as seven on a couple of occasions, including 21-14. A nice finish from Iowa. And the home court advantage does not feel very real right now as Nebraska fans to their feet for a match set point here. Butner the attack. Riley the slide. Blocked by Butner along with Vesti. So Iowa fends off set point number one. You're right. Again, I had my head down for a moment looking at my chart and I'm hearing it and I'm thinking in my mind, this is a Nebraska, we're in Nebraska <laughs> right now. This is a Nebraska home match. And have to, again, remember, we are at Extreme Arena in Iowa, a sellout crowd of over 5,000, but more Nebraska fans are in attendance as we get a timeout called by the Cornhuskers. And there's a look at the, uh, at the crowd here and it's a lot of the red clad Cornhusker fans and they're hoping to see their team today officially celebrate an outright Big Ten title which they haven't done since 2016. This season though is also their first Big Ten title share or outright since 2017. So it's been six years uh, for Nebraska and obviously this program always has a higher goal, and that's to get back to the top. 2017, of course, being the last time that they won the national championship. Yeah, and you look at where we started this season with Big Ten Conference, but you look at Women's Day and the volleyball being at Memorial Nebraska, Stadium, yeah. Memorial Stadium, and really this team is a special team, and what they've been able to accomplish so far in this conference, especially when you consider just how tough and how every match you have a target on your back jim barnes here was uh, a lot of years as a head coach this is his 27th year i mentioned before this year's these two years at iowa he was at tulane before that baylor wyoming lamar so he's seen a lot from the sideline and right now has to be pretty happy with the way his team has fought here in the first set but they still have three more set points 
to deter. Bergen Riley, the slide, and there's the finish. Andy Jackson wins set one for the Cornhuskers at 25. 21 as Nebraska hits 371 in the first set. And Andy Jackson is so hard to defend. See the split block. She could have gone line. She could have gone in between and choosing to just put the ball down. 25-21. Nebraska wins the first set. We'll be back with the second set in a moment on Big Ten Plus. We'll have the quote-unquote automatic bid to the NCAA tournament as Big Ten champs. Uh, of course, they were going to be automatic anyways, as Natalie Moravec starts off the second set very nicely for Iowa with the ace. Yeah, and serving is really key for Iowa. If they can cause some type of predictability on where that pass is going and how many options are going to be available up at the net. Riley, slide, Alec, Darling sends it about seven rows into the crowd. Rebecca Alec along with Andy Jackson is just a really tough duo to be able to defend on the slide attack. What's scarier, their talent or the fact that they're a sophomore and a freshman? <laughs> I think this whole Nebraska team, the fact they're young and no seniors for senior night. Yeah, they technically, they had senior day on Friday with no seniors on the team itself to celebrate. Right side, Beeson. Ortega the set, they run the slide, the tip over by Deary was a little bit off balance. How about that set over for Beeson? Bergen Riley showing why she won this job as the setter in the offseason and Merritt Beeson showing why she's an all-conference player. Bergen Riley, she was all the way over to the left side of the court, sets it back for the perfect set. Yeah, Riley. Special player. Riley had a nine-month battle with her teammate Kennedy Orr in terms of, you know, winning the starting setter position. And John Cook said it was neck and neck for a lot of the time. They had an off-season trip to Brazil where they rotated matches as the setter, and Riley and Orr uh, basically had identical stats. But in the end, uh, Coach Cook just thought that Riley had a little bit more of an edge, a little more consistent tempo, and that's what he wanted for his primary starting setter. Well, and the choice to go 5-1, that's the other thing. With two great setters, there's always the option to go to 6-2 and what works best for your team, but oftentimes coaches go with the 5-1. Alec takes advantage of the overpass. She led to the overpass with her initial swing and then gets the second chance to make it 3-2. Nebraska here in set two. Four kills now for Alec. Beeson and Batenhorst each have five. For John Cook's team, Natalie Moravec and Delaney McSweeney. Butner and Vesti all have three kills on the Iowa side of the net. Ortega with the back set. And that was into the net for the Hawkeyes on the attack by Deary. See the Hawkeyes trying to mix their offense up, going to the outside, going to the right side, getting the middles involved. But the passing is going to be key because they have to have good serve receive to be able to keep the middles involved. There's Rosa Vesti at the middle. Her fourth kill, true freshman from New Zealand. So four kills for her. She's already one away from a career high that she had five against Rutgers. And that match back on October the 27th. That middle transition is really important because it really does set the stage on where the block is going to go, whether or not it creates a split block keeping the defense focused in the middle. Down the line, and how about that play? Kaya Mateo with that ball from Batenhorst, and now off of the block, Butner. But give credit to Mateo for keeping that one alive on that initial attack by Allie Batenhorst. Yeah, great defense. There was a line drive down the line. You know, Iowa never led in the first set, and there was never even a tie. But here in the second set already, we've been tied three times, and Iowa has had the lead. They got the first point of the set as the service error makes it 5-4 Huskers. Well, that's something that's really impressive about Iowa. You look at they're going against the number one team in the country and the scores and the defense they're playing, and you think they're 0-17 in the conference, but they are playing with a high level of volleyball. 
Well, for them, this is their final game at home. They'll finish off next Friday and Saturday playing at Northwestern and then at Wisconsin, another game that you and I will uh, be in attendance for. Jim Barnes trying to rebuild this program as you know, a service error by Butner, 6'5", Nebraska. Last season, Iowa went 10-21, and 4-16 and in the Big Ten. 11th head coach in program history. There's a look at those final couple of games next Friday and Saturday. And some service troubles going back and forth right now. Both sides trying to be aggressive with the serving. Iowa, though, it's a little more painful because they've had two in a row. And so this third server going back is going to be something that just keep the ball in. Rosa Vesti with the serve. Batenhorst into the hands of the block. Mateo sets it to the left side. Moravec and it went off the block and then off of Iowa. And the Cornhuskers back up by a single point. Of course, we referenced it earlier. Nebraska will have that rematch with Wisconsin on Friday on Big Ten Network. A little Black Friday, Big Ten volleyball, and then they'll finish off against Minnesota, both games on the road. And again, Wisconsin's watching this and hoping for Iowa to pull off a, well, what would probably be one of the biggest upsets in recent memory to keep their hopes alive. Looking for, for the rematch. Right, for in, in the rematch for a Big Ten championship, they would need to win out, and they need Nebraska to lose out for that to happen, but it's still possible, is what the point I'm trying to make. <laughs> and Iowa hanging tough here in the second, 7-7. Seven, seven. Harper Murray blocked. She'll pop it back up high. Riley, go back row, and Beeson with the kill. Mary Beeson out of the back row. The third time, I believe, now that she's had a kill on this back row attack. Yeah, and look at this one-on-one. -on -one. That's a back row attack dream. You'd have no one there to be able, you could pick your corners, and that's exactly what Beeson did. She's six of 10 today with three digs and a block. Huskers hitting 356 for the match. 300 here so far in the second set. It's their top 10 in the country in hitting percentage as you get a block from Alec and Murray. Third block point today for the Cornhuskers. They average 2.52 blocks per set, which has them top 36 in the country, fourth in the Big Ten. Well, look at how quick Harper Murray closing the block, setting, actually she was setting to the antenna, but they're so quick along the net, moving laterally. First or second time, Nebraska's been up by two here in this second set, and now the first time they're up by three at 10-7 after winning the first set, 25-21. Nebraska finishing undefeated at home in the regular season for the first time since 2017. Of course, they're gonna have a few more home games coming up in a couple of weeks. McSweeney down to the floor to get it was Choboy. And too strong for Murray. Nebraska looking towards their coaching staff. They're saying we want a challenge. John Cook picking up the card and he will listen to his players and they will challenge that there was a touch by Iowa. But for the time being, it'll be 10-8. And we'll look to see if there'll be enough evidence to overturn this call. Of course, both teams get two challenges. If you are successful, you retain your challenge. Let's good look at here, whether or not there's any movement of the fingers or any change of direction with the ball. That's usually the first indicator and whether or not there was any type of touch. This one, I mean, they definitely, Nebraska was very vocal from <laughs> as soon as that ball was hit that there was a touch. But with the challenge system, it, it is a great system. Of all the things you can challenge, touches are probably the most difficult to determine um, just because of if it has to overrule what had already been decided. So they're looking there at the net to see if Iowa had a touch on the oh, block. Oh, this is a great angle. We might be able to see any type of finger movement. 
and obviously tough one to tell for sure yeah, the refs have all kinds of different angles they have the net camera they have what we're seeing here talked about this nebraska team being young but john cook has been playing 12 players regularly they've all had times where they've started and they feel like we could put people in there and it really doesn't change much for us our practices are very competitive these are his words of course and we're so balanced that games become a little bit easier when you're doing that every day in practice and getting you know so many players in and out of the lineup you know they're without lindsey krause who's been out of the lineup the last nine games so another player that would be worked in to this rotation but in the end it's you know it's lexi rodriguez who is the leader of this team and that's really the biggest thing that john cook points to about lexi rodriguez is the leadership and especially in dealing with six new players on the team this year as they will keep the call on the floor touches are just one of those hard challenges whether or not there was it just wasn't uh, enough to overrule it so it's 10-8 Nebraska with Iowa on the serve. Murray had a block. Rodriguez finds it. Riley plays it over to the floor. Darling deflected over. And now Murray. Harper Murray the kill to make it 11-8. Harper Murray recognizing all the commotion going on the court. She was one on one, able to swing cross court and just put it into the rally. So Nebraska back on the serve now. Won the first set 25 21. Ortega back set to McSweeney. Popped in the air by Riley. Swing by Beeson. No back row attack with Moravec. Riley will go to Alec with the fastball spike there. Becca Alec. The amount of power that comes out of Becca Alec in the middle for the transition kill is just unreal. Fifth kill. She's hitting 714 today. From the right side, that'll be a point off the kill for Gabby Deary, freshman from Burlington, Iowa. And Iowa picking up their side out percentage with this kill from Deary. Coming out the right side, split block from Nebraska. Yeah, around the midpoint of the first set, Iowa's side out percentage was at 50. It's now up to 62.2% is that is wide with no Iowa touch 12-10. Well, one thing about Nebraska is they're going to get their kills. They have the offense in that front row. And so for Iowa, it's about that defense and creating multiple opportunities and defending the serve. If you can piece together a couple of points, a lot of things can happen. Beeson has it blocked. Rodriguez knocking it over and then out of the reach of the hustle of Rodriguez and Murray, but Iowa just a little bit better in that exchange. Rosa Vesti picking up, tying her career high with five kills with that overpass kill. And she is now five for six today. And she tied her career high in blocks with five on Friday against Minnesota. Beeson blocked. Great play, Choboy. Murray just inside the 10 foot line. Ortega will set it. Butner. Rodriguez. Murray the tip. Down to get it. Back row attack. Moravec. And maybe out of the reach of Rodriguez. And Iowa with four straight points ties this second set at 12 as they're gaining some momentum and getting their fan support a little bit louder inside Extreme Arena. A great job by the Hawkeyes, mixing up the offense, going to the outside, going to the right side of the net, and then forcing it to the back row. And that's that disruption that really makes it hard for defenses to be able to defend. 
Amanda Darling continuing on the serve. Going long with it. So Nebraska maintains the advantage. Back up by a point at 13 to 12. Jim Barnes brought Baylor to two NCAA tournaments, which was the prior stop that he had before Tulane. 11 seasons as the head coach at Baylor, in fact. One point Nebraska advantage here in the second set. Buechner going cross court and somehow is able to cut it. I think it landed inside the 10 foot line in bounds on that near side of the court. Another look. It sure did. And watch the block. How much cross court Buechner had to pull off to be able to get that shot in. Another tie here. Eighth tie of the second set after no ties. In the first set, Iowa had the quick 1-0 lead here in this set as well. Beeson into the block. Anna Davis popping it up. Butner into the net. No touch by Nebraska. Butner again trying to find something with that cross court shot. Nebraska plays defense a little bit inside. Lexi Rodriguez scooting in more towards that middle left front area, giving that cross court shot. So Butner sees that, trying to hit it, and it creates the hitting air. Rodriguez to serve. That gets blocked back to Butner. They go back set for Anna Davis. Free ball here for the Hawkeyes. Rosa Vesti. Rodriguez will set Baton Horse, and that gets blocked. And the Hawkeyes with their fourth block point, tying us up at 14. So we're either way, one point away from our mid set timeout. We've seen Rosa Vesti with her kills, this time with the block. Nebraska down, but not ready to defend that block. Third block now for Vesti to go along. They only have her for four kills. We thought she got to that tie career high five. So the next one will be tying it as Batenhorst puts Nebraska on top 15-14 as we go to the timeout on the floor. But Iowa playing very tough on their home floor against the number one ranked team in the country, the Nebraska Cornhuskers, who have a 1-0 lead overall here on Big Ten Plus. Second set after winning the first set 25-21, but Laura were continually impressed so far in this match from with Iowa. You know, they're without a couple of players that were key parts of their team this season, but like I said, they're hanging tough with Nebraska. They are, and that's what the hitting percentage right now in set two with point. 048 so Nebraska on top with the hitting percentage but the defense able to keep Iowa alive Rodriguez the dig bait and horse over the block darling directing it and keeping her team in system and the back row attack there by Butner Murray with the back row attack and Butner with a nice defensive play Boravec off the hands one of our longest rallies so far today and that was blocked off the, off the Nebraska slide, and we're tied at 15. All the digs and transitions leading to the Iowa point. Vesti again, one-on-one, -on -one, able to take care of the block. Iowa looking for its first lead since it was 1-0 here in the second set. Vesti the serve. Rodriguez the serve receive. They run the slide, and they get the point right back from Merritt Beeson with her seventh termination. They called that prior point that was into the net and no block for Vesti. Just to clean up that. So four blocks for Iowa, three for Nebraska. Moravec. And that went off the block, then the antenna. So Moravec's done that very nicely on the left side against the block, just uh, taking advantage of those high hands. And the high hands of Nebraska. When a player is going for those high hands, again, they're swinging to the end of the court, and a lot of times it's hard to control as a blocker. Service error, though, puts Nebraska back out on top by one. You have to look at the service errors and think 
five apiece. Yeah, those points, those easy points that were given to the other team. Both teams have 10 attack errors. Both teams have five service errors. Nebraska has the lone block error. And Nebraska isn't hitting especially well themselves, hitting .065. So you compare the two teams. 065 here in the second set for Nebraska is Butner from the back row. 227 for the match. Iowa 074 here in the second, 147 for the match. Good communication from Iowa on the short serve, and Moravec will rack up her sixth kill. She's had a 20 kill performance this, this year, did that against Kent State back in the non-conference season, a five-set win that the Hawkeyes had that day, and she's had 10 or more 11 times this year. I see that time, more of it going to the deep corner and just too much for the Nebraska defense, but often with the short serve, that's causing disruption. Iowa themselves like serving short. Back row, Beeson, and a little stumble there. Off balance was Ortega. Back to a two-point Husker lead. On Beeson's seventh kill. Quick look at it. Back row going off of the block in between. Front row, middle. That's what threw off Ortega. It's the block touch. Going to get blocked back was Gabby Deary. Free ball here for the Huskers. Beeson. He's set by Darling. Butner. Choboy in the back row. Here's Murray off the hands. McSweeney, haven't called her name much here in the second set. No back row, Moravic out of bounds. And no touch by Nebraska, Point Huskers. Some of the rallies that have been in this match so far are really highlighting the defense by both sides in Nebraska as we see this one just going too far out for Iowa. Questioning whether or not there was a touch on this play might be challenged. Yeah, I believe we are gonna have a challenge here. It may have gotten that left hand of Alec. On the way by is Jim Barnes uses the first of his two challenges today. And a big one at that, of course. You could swing the score to 1918. Yeah, and you look at Becca Alec on the block, and you can sign, kind of see it could have gone off of her left pinky. Pinky and or ring finger, maybe. That would be the only part in which it contacts <laughs> if there was any touch on that. Oh, but and that one has a good demonstration because watch the fingers of Alec on that left hand after the ball goes over. You can kind of see her pressing over. There might have been a touch there. We'll see. And that is the call. They do overturn it. Jim Barnes successful on the challenge. So both teams have challenged. Iowa gets to keep their challenge because they won. So it should now be 19 to 18, Nebraska. Iowa will still have two challenges. Nebraska down to the one, of course, with their failed challenge earlier. And that's a big swing. We always talk about the, the hurdle of a team getting to 21st. Now Iowa still has that opportunity to be the team that gets to 20. Uh, the first team here in the second set. They'll be back on the serve. We had a little communication here on making sure the rotation yep. and the last thing team wants is out of rotation based on a challenge. <laughs> and a service error after that challenge does get Nebraska to 20. And the six miss serve for the match with both teams. And those are the point 20 in the game of volleyball is so important. Talking about you want your perfect volleyball after point 20. Harper Murray is serving. 
Six rotations as a freshman for the Huskers, and that's a sixth service error for Nebraska. You look at Natalie Borovec, who's got a team high seven kills for Iowa. I was gonna say, both sides are being aggressive. You see the serve just barely going out. So they are making, they are taking the risk and making the team uh, try and decide whether or not to play that ball. Kaya Mateo on the Iowa serve. Riley directs it to Batenhorst, has it blocked, and then it gets threat to a spot for the one-hander by Alec. Alec doing a really nice job up at the front net, defending the net, taking the overpass, just being aggressive, recognizing it's gonna go over, taking care of it. And it wasn't a block for Alec, but John Cook says that he would pay to watch her block at the net. Yes. Obviously high praise. The fundamentals are so good along the net. And that's off of the block for the point for Beeson. And that's going to draw a timeout from Iowa at 22-19 Cornhuskers. In, in talking more about Merritt Beeson, who has eight kills on the afternoon, hitting 444. She wants to be a third-grade teacher. <laughs> and it was funny, you know, Coach Cook says, it's kind of like she's leading a third-grade third class every day. He said that with a smile on his face. And, uh, but he said, if you spend five minutes with her, you can see that she's a leader, that she relates with everyone, builds relationships quickly. And think about this, she's one of the captains, along with Rodriguez. And this is the first year Beeson has been with the Cornhuskers after transferring from Florida. Yeah, and that leadership skill is what Nebraska was looking for in that role. And yes, he, John Cook mentioned that she's going to be an outstanding third grade teacher, just getting to watch her so far with this team. There you see her sitting right there in the middle of the Cornhusker bench right now. And, and talking about the Nebraska coaching staff as well, you have to point out Jordan Larson, who with the addition of the uh, extra full-time coach. He's now full-time, of course, won a gold medal, team captain, Team USA, and obviously a standout player for Nebraska. And uh, you know, Coach Cook saying it's the highlight of his career when former players come back and want to coach alongside him. And he's had uh, several of those now. Yeah, and currently three former players are working under Coach Cook. Kelly Hunter, Jordan Larson, Lindsey Peterson, Director of Operations. Twenty-two, nineteen, Nebraska in this second set. And by the way, Jordan Larson still plans to play in the next Olympics. As that is shot long, 22-20. Looks like we're going to have another challenge here, whether or not that was a touch. Cornhuskers turning to John Cook saying that was a touch off of the top of the net off of Iowa. So all of the challenges so far have been touch it, touch related. We haven't seen any of the in out. No in out or any violation at the nets. So we see Jordan Larson right there assisting John Cook. So you mentioned she still wants to play and the U.S. national team captain. Won the gold medal in Tokyo. Of course, in 2020, the 2020 Olympics that were played in 2021, of course. We're trying to rack up a replay here for you to see. We have this swing by Beeson at the net. It might be off of Vesti is where the question is. You see Vesti trying to catch up at the end, and that's where that shot goes is that right over Vesti, and you kind of see there might have been a touch there off of Vesti, but we'll let them review. But I think the motion of the fact that Vesti was late trying to close that block, and so the timing of it ends up being with where they, the Cornhuskers believe there was a touch. If 
this does get overturned, then the score would become 23-19 in favor of Nebraska. As the call on the floor. Attack error by Beeson. Only game left this weekend in Big Ten Volleyball. You're watching it right now. There's going to be some a Wednesday match coming up. Well, actually, from that view, it looks more like Caitlin Butner is where the ball traveled to, where Vesti was catching up, but the ball had already passed by Vesti. Looks like a decision is coming now. And the point remains with Iowa. So not enough evidence to overturn the call there. So it remains 22-20 Nebraska. Huskers don't seem too phased by it. But now they have no challenges left unless we get all the way to a fifth set where you do get awarded an extra challenge if you have zero or one going into it. Riley, Beeson, and that will count. 23-20. Mary Beeson just being so strong on the right side, being able to power through the Hawkeyes block. Out of system here. Hasn't happened that often for Iowa. And off one foot, shot too far by Merritt Beeson. Yeah, the serving has been, when it's been in, the serving's been pretty aggressive as far as trying to go for those seam positions, serving in between two people, creating the non-perfect pass. Excuse me, that was Jackson with the attack error. And that's a kill for Batenhorst. That's her seventh. And Nebraska's up to set point. Try to win back-to-back back -to -back sets by the same score. They won the first set 25-21. And maybe not exactly what people were expecting coming into this match today. Maybe thinking Nebraska would have a little bit of easier time with Iowa. But now the pro-Nebraska crowd that has inhabited most of Extreme Arena cheering on the Huskers on this set point. Murray, the tip to the floor, went Mateo, rolled over by Moravic. They run the slide, and that wraps up the set, and that is Andy Jackson finishing it off for the Cornhuskers in back-to-back 25-21 victories for the Huskers here so far. The fifth kill for Andy Jackson giving Nebraska the 2-0 lead. Well, look at this slide. Andy Jackson so quick, splits the block right down before anybody from the Hawkeye side can react. Just awesome slide execution. And so Nebraska with the 2-0 advantage. We'll see if Iowa can make the comeback in the third as you're watching Big Ten Volleyball. Off alongside the four-time, former four-time all-conference at Illinois State. Yes. You're a former player, but you're forever a four-time all-conference. So calling you a former four-time all-conference doesn't really make sense. But Iowa, for the second straight set, takes a 1-0 advantage. McSweeney kind of favoring her right shoulder there. Hopefully that's nothing. Yeah, it was noticeable after that, though, that she was grabbing her shoulder. Picked up the kill, her fourth of the day. Alec in the middle, great play to the floor. A combination of Ortega and Darling. Alec tries again though. Alec out of the middle, that's where we see all the power coming from with this duo for the Cornhuskers. And Ortega, she has done a really nice job today with her setting and decisions, but just so much power coming from Alec. Harper Murray on the serve. McSweeney the tip and the pancake Rodriguez. Batenhorst high hands using the block. And then not able to be dug up by Murray. And the Hawkeyes getting going with Deary on the right side, but notice that did you see Becca Alex set that ball out of the middle? Just perfect hands, recognizing that Rodriguez had, was on the floor, getting the pancake up. Alec turning around, saying a beautiful set to the outside. And 
They're mopping up where Rodriguez hit the floor a few moments ago. Today playing her 93rd career match. The Libero for the Cornhuskers from Sterling, Illinois, a two-time All-American, someone that you saw play in her high school days. Yeah, during high school, they were in the state championships, and she, even then, was, you knew when you saw her, she was going to be a special player. Buechner goes cross-court off of Rodriguez, and for the first time today, Iowa has a two-point advantage. What do you like about the game of Caitlin Butner? Well, Butner just has a lot of power on the outside. We saw that cross court shot. It would be good to see her get a few more of those sharp cross court. But a lot of that has to do with the blocking in Nebraska and the scheme that they're setting up. But yeah, Caitlin Butner has a lot of power. And now let's see Lexi Rodriguez on the serve, part of her game that has been improving over the season and her career. Darling, with a good serve receive. Swing by Butner leads to an overpass. Vesti battling at the net with Beeson and Jackson. Riley goes to Batenhorst. Set by Ortega and off the block and out of bounds for the point for Anna Davis, or check that Gabby Deary on the right side. Deary on the right side, tough job with the block. Look how close Nebraska is, and Deary going off of the hands of Jackson, forcing the ball out. Gabby Deary, the freshman with her third kill. Natalie Moravec has a team high seven for the Hawkeyes. And that's an ace on the board for Iowa for the second time today. Kaya Mateo, true freshman from New York City, picks up her 12th ace of the season. Well, this float serve dropped way before Nebraska was thinking it was going to with that difficult pass. Out of system, the Huskers. Baton Horst, no touch at the net, and the Hawkeyes have a four-point lead in this third set. That's why those serving errors can be frustrating. Look at how many points Iowa's been able to get from tough serving and creating a predictable pass on where that ball is going to go offensively for the Cornhuskers. Murray on the serve receive. The back set to Beeson. Side out. John Cook's Cornhuskers down 6-3 here in the third set. 70. 4% side out percentage for the match. Iowa continuing to rise in that category. They're up above 67% now after a very slow start. But Nebraska had a seven point lead in the first set as that lands on the line. That's an ace. Merritt Basin with her 26th ace of the season and the second for Nebraska today. Look at this serve as it looks like it's going to go out and just drops right on the baseline. Remember the first set, Nebraska led by seven. It was 21-14, if I remember correctly. Iowa made a nice push late to only lose 25-21 as they lost 25-21 in the second set and now playing their best so far tonight. Have a 7-4 lead in the third. Rosa Vesti again. Yeah, Rosa Vesti working really hard to get out to the outside, close the block, and she is the one that takes all that ball and puts it right back into the Cornhusker territory. Vesti with four kills, four blocks, a couple of digs. Riley, bait and horse, cross court, there's Darling. Mateo over to Moravec. From the back row, Beeson off the back set. Merritt Beeson all over the court. We saw her on the right side. We've seen her on the outside. Depending on the rotation where she gets it, she's gotten an ace. And then this time out, the back row attack. Nebraska with 34 kills today. Iowa with 26. Jim Barnes is going to challenge. She's already one for one today. I believe. So I just heard they're looking for Nebraska in the net. So Iowa believes that a net error by the Huskers 
As we saw, Nebraska's used both of their challenges unsuccessfully. Well, this could be interesting with Nebraska out of challenges and Iowa, if they lose this one, it goes down to one challenge left for the match unless it goes to five sets. But, you know, interesting perspective here. Let's see if Nebraska at any point is in the net. You look at, yeah. oh, 15. yeah. Now, what's interesting Andy though, Jackson. well, we'll see what the call goes, but what I was gonna say is, yep. yeah, she was in the net. Sometimes you can say if it's not interrupting the play, you can be in the net. But in that case, the ball and the play was right there in front of the Cornhuskers. So that makes it eight for Iowa. So Iowa two for two on its challenges. Yeah, so now Iowa gets to keep their challenge. So they still have two challenges left in this match. Butner with the serve. They're on the side for Andy Jackson. The freshman from Brighton, Colorado, who is 12th in the nation in hitting percentage, showing a bit of the reason why. What's so impressive between Andy Jackson and Becca Alec is how fast they are off of the set to be able to react. It is impossible for Iowa to stay up with Andy Jackson with so much attention on the outside as well. Served by Laney Choboy. And that'll pick up an ace for the Cornhuskers, their third. Well, this is how quick Nebraska can refocus and get those points back into the match. We see Iowa with the two-point lead, but just with some tough serving and side out, they're right back into it. Tenth ace of the season for Choboy. Mateo setting Moravec. Riley goes to Murray, blocked and out of the reach of the diving Choboy. Where Rosa Vesti is, is where the touches have been for Iowa along the net. Good block, setting up, catching the outside. Iowa forcing a timeout by Nebraska. Timeout, Cornhuskers, Iowa down 0-2, but have a 9-6 lead here in the third set. And look at Rosa Vesta, Vesti getting over there, closing the block with Anna Davis. And we'll see how that continues coming out of the timeout. The libero for Iowa, you've enjoyed watching her play here today. Yeah, we've seen a lot of offense by the Cornhuskers, but Amanda Darling just keeping the ball alive. As Nebraska out of the timeout gets the quick termination making it 9-7. Darling, nine digs so far for Iowa. Yeah, and that leadership in the back row, we talk a lot about Lexi Rodriguez, but Darling has the same effect on the back row, oftentimes creating multiple opportunities for the Hawkeyes in transition. Andy Jackson with that termination a moment ago for the Cornhuskers. 9-7 Iowa here in the third. Moravec, that's coming. Oh, no, back to the net, kept alive. Have to play it over net. Nope, that's four, yep. If Kennedy Orr did not recognize that that was off the net and not off a block touch from Iowa. So four contacts and the point for the Hawkeyes. And Kennedy Orr, we talked about the competition going in between the setters and this rotation, Kennedy Orr is on the court. That's part of that 12 player rotation though that John Cook talked about. 12 players, they all play. <laughs> they're available, they're playing. It's a busy day for the University of Iowa. Got wrestling going on at Carver Hawkeye Arena and then a little bit later on, Caitlin Clark, women's basketball team. Be taking on Drake along with this match going on right now as well. Bergen Riley over to Harper Murray. And Murray with kill number five today, but she's had five errors, so she's back to uh, zero percent. Seven digs added on today. Well, the fast tempo of Bergen Riley getting that out to Harper Murray, creating that opening in the block just to terminate it. Serve was by Riley. McSweeney off the hands of the block. Choboy directs it to the net. Got it to Riley. Murray the tip. Now McSweeney. 
Rodriguez will set Beeson. Butner back there. Moravec the attack. Back to Murray, down the middle, and that's another kill for Murray. So now she's up above 0%, making it 10-9. Well, defending Nebraska makes it hard when you have to put a lot of focus in the middles, but Harper Murray coming into the middle, more of an inside tempo, and just have had nobody against her on the outside hit. Murray, who has made some big time plays as a freshman. Coach Cook's saying there's still, you know, room for growth, that she has her struggles in early on in sets and then becomes the best player in the country once it gets to 20. And she really locks in late in a set. And now the Cornhuskers with three straight have tied it up at 10. Nebraska has never led in this third set. It's tied for the second time, and Iowa will use one of its two timeouts. The timeout called by the Hawkeyes here with Nebraska on the run. They're trying to put this one away and again claim officially an outright Big Ten title for the first time in seven years and then go into the final weekend of the year where they obviously want to keep playing really well but gear up for the NCAA tournament as we take a look at some of the action today from the freshman Harper Murray. Number 27, you see with the serves, nice float serve, creating the ace, being able to just cause that disruption, and then see her in the middle coming in. She's an outside, so every time she goes to hit, it's in a different place, back row. Then she goes back to the outside, and the blocking game, she, for a freshman, wow, just tremendous volleyball player. So she plays six rotations, and when she's in the back row with Rodriguez and Choboy, in serve receive, she's the one that gets attacked because you're not going to serve Rodriguez. Choboy is maybe the heir, or is the heir apparent mm -hmm. for the libero spot for Nebraska. So it's Murray who has to take a lot of that on. So she does that well, and then also is a 257 hitter, uh, 3.25 kills per set, leading the team in aces coming into the day today, and they're her numbers. Uh, for the match today. She does have five errors, so that hitting percentage is only 036, but uh, building it back up here. Yeah, and the amount of focus it takes to be a six rotation player, you mentioned that serve receive, knowing every time it's probably gone into you, and that focus and transition out to the outside, and then the defensive piece of it. Bergen Riley, the serve. Down for that set was Ortega. Darling will set it here, all the way from Moravec. Rodriguez pops it high, middle attack. Alec had it blocked by McSweeney. Beeson goes cross court. Darling, the bump set. Around the right is Deary for the Hawkeyes. And Murray, sense that we're talking about her and she adds another kill. <laughs> Some of that perfect volleyball that we normally see around point 20 for Murray, just the explosiveness. It's too fast and so much power. Too fast, a little too furious. Yeah. Sorry, Nebraska, 11-10 lead. Their first lead of the third set. It's uh, four straight points for the Cornhuskers. Moravec, no touch at the net by the Nebraska block. And that's five straight now for Nebraska. Well, good teams can come back really quickly, and that's probably the focus here with Iowa, stopping those runs with with Nebraska, because as we can see, 12-10, at that point, Nebraska, Iowa had been winning 10-10 before that timeout. Well, Jim Barnes and the Hawkeyes are two for two on challenges thus far, and they are gonna go to the challenge again, as John Cook looks unfazed, just watching on. And so now we'll try to figure out we got here on this challenge. We're looking to see if there's any type of touch on the play. Nothing. It appear to be anything at the net, nothing past it as well, but of course you see Moravec and Butner, they're convinced. This is a good camera angle if there were to be any touch. Well, decision quickly made. And the Hawkeyes now three of three on challenges. 
as a call reversed. Which is really interesting because, again, touches are sometimes the hardest thing to be able to see on a replay. And Iowa being able, like you mentioned, three for three on the challenges. I, I, I'm going to admit, I don't think I've ever seen a team three for three on challenges. Two for two, maybe. Sure, it's happened. As getting side out, Merritt Beeson with her 11th kill. She's the only player on either side in double figures. She's had eight matches this year where she's had 15 or more, including a career high 27 at the Huskers had a five set win against Penn State this season. Well, just a couple matches that have gone five for Nebraska. Three times they've gone five, eight times they've gone four. So that's only 11 matches this year out of 26 that they've gone more than three. And that landing in for Alec with a big reaction from the partisan Nebraska crowd in Iowa. Well, most of this rally was handled up at the net, and Alec just going to the side and terminating the ball, defending that net. High level volleyball IQ. Becca Alec, in the words of her coach, John Cook, very impressed with her and how she studies the game. That went off the net, down to the floor. Riley got it. Beeson will send it over to Batenhorst. Free ball coming from Nebraska. Riley, back set, Beeson, and the block by Buechner and McSweeney for the Hawkeyes. Their eighth block, they're doubling up Nebraska in that category. Blocking was gonna be a key if the Hawkeyes were gonna take any points away from Nebraska. And they've done a really nice job this afternoon, teaming up, making sure the block is closed. And that was a great example of being able to end the point. Hitting percentage is now 204 for Nebraska, 149 for Iowa. Iowa this season, opponents hit 248 against them. It's bottom 30 in the country, and right now Nebraska is only at 204 against them. Peyton Horse tip got blocked. They feed her again down the line. Ortega able to angle it over to Darling, who sets it for Butner. They'll go back to her with the tip over the block. The coverage by Batenhorst. Murray comes flying in for the back row. Tipped back by Alec. Butner again, changes up the shot again. We saw three different shots there from Caitlin Butner, and the third time's the charm. And all of those were the trust with the outside. Butner, transition kill off the net, dig, back swinging again. And it's just all about the power and being able to stay with it. And say Iowa with the dig going all the way through. Not much room to go there, but enough for the Hawkeyes. Tied at 13. Kaya Mateo just checked in as Darling the serve for the Hawkeyes. Rodriguez receiving it, and then the quick from Riley to Alec. Bergen Riley has really good timing and chemistry with Becca Alec and being able to transition that straight into a kill. She does, Bergen does a really good job of getting situations with her hitters one-on-one. -on -one. Riley's been a four-time setter of the week this season, two-time freshman of the week, 13th in the nation in assists per set. Beeson into the block, kept alive. Beeson gets a nice swing at it again. Rosa Vesti has it blocked in the middle by the Cornhuskers for their fifth block. And that was kind of just a tough set. Vesti going against two blocks in the middle, nowhere to really go, and whether angle or not. Andy Jackson with her first block of the match. Butner. Back row again, Murray, and that's off the hands of the block for the kill. And Harper Murray is up to eight kills now and getting that hitting percentage close to 100 with the five errors, but also has nine digs, one block, one ace, and a couple of assists today for the freshman in a timeout, Iowa, 16-13, Nebraska. 
Of course, the Cornhuskers right now, the consensus number one team in the country for good reason. Uh, barring a late season swoon here, will be the number one overall seed in the NCAA tournament. And, you know, John Cook and the team might not look ahead, but we can look ahead. And <laughs> this Nebraska team, and we, they've played, obviously, some really tough competition. They have wins over Stanford, the current number two team in the country. They beat the Cardinal in four. A win over Kentucky. They're currently number 12. They beat them in four. Uh, a win over 15th rank Creighton. They beat the Blue Jays in four. And then, of course, you have Big Ten opponents, Wisconsin, Penn State, Purdue, that are ranked. And Minnesota has been in and out of the rankings at, at different times as well. Is it theirs for the taking this year, or is it going to come down to just, you know, a couple of plays at some point later on in the postseason where another team can get the best of them? Yeah, it's all when it comes to tournament time, you never know. And John Cook mentioned how young they are, but you watch this team, you don't see them being young. You see them knowing the game, being able to play. And we've seen a lot of rallies. And what's been impressive about it is Nebraska, how even they're used to getting that first ball kill, they're rallying and keeping the ball alive. And with the fan support that they get wherever they go. Now, of course, Nebraska to Iowa, not the longest trip, but still, they come out on a Sunday afternoon and they fill up Iowa's arena. They want to see their team celebrate an outright Big Ten championship. Not sure how much they'll actually celebrate, though, just because obviously with the bigger goals uh, in mind. Butner, the tip down and out of the reach of Batenhorst. Meanwhile, Iowa, this match may go down as a, a loss, a sweep right now, 16-14 in the third, so a long way to go. But I feel like there's going to be a lot of positives that the Hawkeyes can take out of this match that they can build upon uh, for the final weekend and into the offseason. Yeah, you're absolutely right, because we talked about at the beginning of this what Iowa needed to do. They needed to win some of those rallies, and you look at the scoring that Iowa's been able to have with the lead changes and the ties, and yeah, this, I don't think the score is definitely not going to reflect how good of a match this has been. 25-21, each of the first two sets for Nebraska. The second set was closer uh, than the first set uh, throughout. And then, of course, in this third set, Iowa had the lead all the way up until Nebraska took the lead for the first time at 11-10. Butner into the block, and that lands in on the Iowa side. Butner looked like she wanted to force that off the block out of bounds, but it didn't go the extra few inches necessary. Yeah, Butner reaching high, trying to go off the block of Riley, and that oh, ball just right landed on right in. 18-14 Huskers now in the third. Great serve gets Iowa scrambling. They stayed in system as Mateo was able to set. And there's a kill on the left side by Batenhorst. So sure, Iowa may have been in system, but they were uh, scrambling to get that attack. And then Batenhorst and Nebraska make it 19-14. Yeah, and the rallies and the defense that the Cornhuskers are able to piece together, it's the in-transition dig. They're still getting perfect digs to Riley to be able to transition. That's go. really what stands apart. And a go big red chant going on inside the arena. And somebody was in the net. It was Iowa. Well, we might have another challenge here. Well, for the time being, net violation, Iowa, 20 to 14, Nebraska. Iowa is three for three on their challenges. Now, they've all been uh, block touch challenges. This would be different. So, Vesti, she was pointing at Andy Jackson, I believe. Better Riley, because Riley went up for the block. But Vest, Vesti clearly went into the net, but I didn't yeah. see what happened right before. So if we run that back again, we can see what uh, Laura was pointing out there with uh, Riley or Jackson. Watch Riley on the right side before she goes up and then maybe when she comes back down. But I've not seen any contact before or after that would lead Vesti to believe she was in the net. It just doesn't look like there was anything there. So this challenge happening here.
Nebraska. This might break the streak. Three for three. <laughs> might you, be you three for four. You can't take the challenges home with you if you're Jim Barnes. So let's see if we have a decision. Can Iowa go four for four on the challenges today? That has to, I mean, can't imagine that's happened very often. But they won't. It stays with Nebraska. Celebrating. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I haven't seen a, ch uh, a celebration for a challenge going a team's way quite like that. I guess they've realized they've had three prior Iowa challenges that went against them and now and the two that they had. So there were five challenges in this match before that that all went against Nebraska. So I think that's why they celebrated and they got one. And getting one on the pancake, Rodriguez. Batenhorst will pick up another kill. Ninth for Ali Batenhorst, the junior from Houston. Lexi Rodriguez starting that play with the pancake dig perfectly set for Riley and then yeah, the big swing on the outside by Batenhorst. And Nebraska four points away from officially claiming an outright Big Ten championship for the first time in seven years. Back off the net and over. And Festy into the block, Jackson and Riley. Andy Jackson's really quick with her feet in the middle, going for the slide this time, using her feet to catch up to the block. Team up with Riley. Twenty-two, fourteen, Nebraska in the third. Beeson with that serve, back row attack by Moravec. Rodriguez to the floor. They run the slide. Jackson into the block. Darling, a long bump set to Butner. We go to Harper Murray from the back row. And Nebraska has run the pick very, very well here today. Yeah, that back row attack is something to watch. Watch Murray coming out there just right over the block, not prepared with the Iowa and how fast Murray can hit that ball. The offense spread out for the Cornhuskers. 12 kills for Beeson, nine each for Alec, Batenhorst, and Murray. Jackson also has seven. That accounts for all 46 Nebraska kills today as Iowa gets side out at 23-15. That was an important stop for the Hawkeyes. The run that was continuing with Nebraska, and it's been pretty tight with the defense working to get a point. Butner's serve is wide, and now Nebraska has Big Ten championship points. The crowd knows it. Laney Choboy to serve. Since 2016.